What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today we are back with our top 10 AEW action figures of the year. Now, we are going to lay some ground rules first before we get into it, but it was sort of a up and down year, you know? Lots of things in limbo. When are we getting this? When are we getting that? A lot of different things going on behind the scenes, but I'm hoping that in 2024 we can get things back on track with AEW and their action figures and jazzwares and all those things. We'll have to check on that and see how things go, man. But today we are going to be counting down our top 10 AEW action figures of the year, but I do have some honorable mentions here. And I also want to, uh, we're going to rank the Supremes as well because I think it's important to get into it. I did not mix the Supreme figures into my top 10 because I don't think it's comparable. I really don't think it's comparable. With all the accessories you get, it's really, I mean, it's obviously like two figures in one. So it's honestly, it's not really comparable. Like I said, I really wish we would have gotten more Supremes this year so we could have ranked, you know, like our top five or top 10 Supreme figures of the year or rank all of them. So we're just going to rank, I think we got four this year in total. Hopefully next year we'll get some more coming out and we'll dive into that. We know Sting is coming. We know that Malachi Black Vault exclusive is coming. I need to do a whole damn video on the Malachi Black situation when in terms of Supreme Edition, man. There's like one listing on eBay. If anybody's watching this video, comment down below if you even own that figure. I have two of that figure because I pre-ordered them, but nonetheless, man, let's dive into it today. We're going to be not only sharing these honorable mentions, but I'm going to count down the top four Supremes of the year and list them in order from worst to best. And then, of course, we're going to dive into my top 10 and rank the top 10 best AEW action figures of the year. But we do have our honorable mentions here. Very quality figures right here. I like all of these figures in their own right, and I did have a bunch more written down, but these were kind of, the, uh, I guess, the 10 to 20. If we, if I were to rank the top 20 or whatever, these would have probably been, you know, from 20 to 11 or whatever the case is here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so I have 12 figures right here, but nonetheless, let's shut the hell up and dive into it. Unrivaled 13 Darby Allen, I thought was a solid addition. Darby Allen and Kenny Omega, the best guys for AEW Unrivaled figures. There's another guy that's creeping up the list in terms of quality every single time you get a figure of him, and we'll get into that as the countdown goes, but Darby Allen makes some of the best unrivaled figures. Just bar none, feels great in hand, poses around great, have this new screaming head sculpt. He's got his added tattoos. Darby Allen's a beast. I hope to see more of him in 2024 when it comes to action figure releases. Next up, we do have the ringside exclusive Sammy Guevara. Now, guy has really grown on me. I really love all the accessories you got. This gear is so great. I do have like some, I don't know, I got some schmutz on mine, but I like the necklace. I like all the accessories, like I said. The zebra print gear is obviously right up my alley, so I really enjoyed this figure. It kind of blew me away. I was not expecting this figure to be as good as it was, so I love the ringside exclusive Sammy Guevara. You can grab this from ringside collectibles. Use code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10%. Next up, we have the Unrivaled 13 Dan Housen, who got a few figures this year. Maybe you'll see him on the top 10, but this Unrivaled version was pretty good. I like the entrance gear. Legs are pretty much the same, but having our first main line Dan Housen was great. I like Dan Housen a lot, and getting a figure of him is honestly a dream come true. It's kind of like Orange Cassidy, so I was really happy to get that one. Target exclusive Samoan Joseph over here. Not a perfect figure, but certainly movable and stuff. I don't like the knee pads, but this figure was pretty fun, you know? It doesn't have the best ab crunch, but I liked it. I, I, I was, I would, you know, it had baby hands as well. Couldn't make the top 10, but it's still a certainly fun Uncle Tim AEW Unrivaled figure. Next up, we do have Santana and Ortiz from Unmatched Series 6, I think it was. Never reviewed these on the channel, and actually, we didn't review half of Unmatched 7. We didn't review these guys, so, you know, they're still really cool. They got their prison jumpsuits we finally got to kind of finish out our full team in the jumpsuits here or the the prison suits and these were pretty cool figures i enjoyed these a lot posable can use their lower halves for different promo guys so i like santana and ortiz i don't know when the hell we're gonna get more of those guys speaking of tag teams we do have private party right here very close to making my top 10 i, I think that isaiah cassidy's head sculpt wasn't the best but i did really enjoy their attires i like their shirts i like Everything going on. Very toyetic guys, and certainly a tag team we've been waiting on for so long. Didn't like their shoe molds, but you know, it is what it is. It's okay. I like the private party figures. They were fun this year. We also have Unrivaled 12 Mox. A lot of people really like this figure and the head sculpt and stuff. It's still, man, Mox is one of those big misses. He's kind of the AJ Styles equivalent until recently. Okay, I know they fixed AJ Styles recently, but he's kind of the Jazzwares equivalent of missing out. They just can't seem to get this guy completely right, but this was a solid addition. I don't know, man. It's just, it, it's not as quality as it could be, but I still like the Unrivaled 12 Mox. Next up is Unmatched Series 6 Malachi Black. Uh, I did hack his arms off for a custom that you guys will see eventually down the line, I guess, but I just feel like they make his chest too big for Malachi Black, but very toyetic. I mean, all the tattoos, and my god, there he goes. All the tattoos and stuff, you had to mention him. He's a great toyetic guy. We have San Diego Comic Con exclusive Sting right here, and I want to give a huge shout out to Daniel from Jazzwares for helping me out with this Sting figure. Obviously a repaint, you know, it's got the cloth good shirt, which is great. I like the face paint and everything like that, 
but it is it was a cool addition even the, it, with the coffin and everything like that I thought it was awesome and then we do have blood and guts Wheeler Yuta I love the blood and guts line I love this head sculpt I like the jacket and the different stuff you had going on with it but I did not like the legs man didn't like the legs um the feet are the main thing I just like I don't know what the hell is up with the feet right here but they don't really articulate well they're very very tight and it kind of prevented me from you know putting him on the top 10 his feet are very weird it's a very weird feet like he looks like he has big feet like clown shoes a little bit and then he can't really pose them around so it makes him hard to stand I don't know it's a very weird one but I do like the figure aesthetically it's just some of those things that kept him from the top 10 but next up we're going to dive into our supreme editions all right man so here's the supremes that we got this year and I know that this is sort of a two-in-one right here that's why I have this because you know it's kind of like two different figures completely I know that these and these were their own realms like this is two different gears this was like entrance jacket and whatnot but this is like entrance jacket and like a completely different different promo gear but but talking about Supremes this year man I mean they had some incredible pieces every Supreme that they've released has been top notch I mean almost to the point where if you disbanded the unrivaled and unmatched lines from here like you cut them off from right now so you'd have all the characters that they've made up till this point in unmatched and unrivaled and only started making Supreme characters and limited the aqua the quantity of the figures I would be all aboard that I think but if I were to rank these from worst to best and just kind of talking into it man none of these are bad. None of these are bad figures. All of them have really good things about them. They're top of the line, interchangeable heads, the butterfly joints. I mean, I think the scaling on the CM Punk is a bit out of sorts. I think he could be smaller, which that could be something that we try to explore on surgery or something like that. But nonetheless, man, this is, the Supreme line is so fun. It's so fun. I love the packaging. I love everything about these figures. But if I were to rank these, let's go ahead and take them out right here. And I know that this is going to be a long-winded video, but I just want to get into it, man. Starting out first, at the bottom of the ranking, and again, none of these figures are bad. I would probably put Ray Fiend Phoenix. And honestly, it's just, he he's just the, out of all the characters here, he's probably the one I would want the least. And that's not saying anything because I love Ray Phoenix and I love his, this figure. Next up, kind of pains me to do this, but I got to go Pinta. Look, dude, this figure's unbelievable with the paint splatter, the mask, the different, he has sculpted padding in his butterfly joints. It's unbelievable, man. Unfreaking believable. Now, this might be a hot take, but I would go number two, I would go Supreme CM Punk for some of the stuff I've already mentioned. And we'll get into that in just a moment. But number one has to be the Supreme Edition Kenny Omega figure, and getting into that again, let's let's line them all up here, and I'll get into why my ranking is this way. But really, man, it just comes down to back in the day, man. Anybody in the community would have killed for a Kenny Omega, and you used to have to go through leaps and bounds just to make a Kenny Omega. You had to buy the Daniel Bryan Elite, you had to buy the DDP hair piece, you had to find the formula, you had to do all these crazy things. And so to finally have not only an unrivaled or an action figure made from a legit company of Kenny Omega, but to have a Supreme Edition with the butterfly joints and the interchangeability and the pinless joints and how great these figures feel with these head sculpts, man. I mean, this Kenny Omega, this Walmart Edition Supreme Kenny Omega is unlike anything. It's possibly, it's a top 10 favorite wrestling figure for me all time, maybe. It's definitely up there, man. And also, I love the CM Punk. I love the camo gear, all the different things. I like the head sculpts and it's a fantastic figure with fantastic pieces. I just think the scale's a little bit too crazy and that's really what uh, what does it in for me, but I don't think this Punk could have jumped this Kenny Omega. It would have it would have, it would have been, uh, I don't know, it would just have required some insane things. Also, just noticed this fell between clips there, but... Yeah, man, I had to talk about the Supremes a little bit before we got into the top 10, but the Supreme collection is just so great. I love the Supreme figures, some of my favorite wrestling figures that are coming out. So yeah, just had to talk about those a little bit and give praise to these figures because they're truly incredible, but I didn't want to kind of hack my top 10. I feel like it's kind of cheating putting Supremes with regular Unmatched and Unrivaled, but nonetheless, man, let's shut the hell up. Let's dive into my top 10 AEW figures of 2023. Coming in at number 10 is a figure that I think a lot of people forgot about, man. We have the Shop AEW exclusive Jade Cargill figure. Now, this is just a repaint of the original Jade Cargill figure, but I love that figure originally, and I love this redo or this repaint right here, man. The gear is phenomenal. This, like, tealish blue with silver and white really stands out. I like the silver boots. The green hair really stands out, and I like the OG Jade. I think that it, it could be better if it had better articulation or feel in hand, but as, as far as aesthetics go, this 
Which is a great figure, man. I can't wait for her Elite that officially comes out. Probably, oh man, it's probably going to be the 2025 Royal Rumble or shortly before or after because I think she will debut at the Royal Rumble and then we'll get her Elite down the line. We'll probably get her uh, quite a bit from Mattel. You know, she's very toyetic and all those different things. So that'll be interesting. But this figure had to come into my top 10. I thought it was a great women's figure especially. So Shop AEW Jade is number 10. Coming in at number nine is kind of cheating. We have a pair of figures here, man, but they're essentially, you know, they they go together, man. You find these together, they're going to be together. You have the Street Fighter GameStop exclusive Young Buck figures. These are great, man, and arguably they may be the best renditions of the Young Bucks that we've seen outside of the Series 3 Bucks, and you could even argue, I mean, they have really great head sculpts. I'm not a huge fan of the molded-on tassels, but it's not too bad. I like the gear. I love the cloth geese that they come with. The headbands are cool, but I think it's really the head sculpts that really stand out about these, but... But I really enjoy these Young Bucks, posing them around and stuff like that, you know, putting them with the Kenny Omega. Really unique stuff. I love the packaging as well. These are just a pair of really fun Young Buck figures. And again, arguably the best Bucks that they've done, if not the best Bucks that they've done. So I thought these were pretty underrated and they, they came in at number nine on my top AEW figures of the year. Coming in at number eight, man, we have another women's figure and a very tatted up women's figure and probably the best women's figure of the year. It's definitely up there, man. We have the Ruby Soho from AEW and Match Series 6. Really fun figure, man. I had a lot of great time posing this girl around. She's also got the shin cut in there. You guys know I love shin cut. She got the thigh cut, shin cut, boot cut. Lots of fun stuff going on here. She's very tatted. And I did put the NXT Elite jacket on there that really puts the chef's kiss on it. And it looks awesome. I'm, I'm really proud of this figure. I think it looks great. And the only thing I can really say that's bad about it is the little hair issue on the bangs or like blending in with their makeup and all that weird stuff but very good aesthetically just a lot of great things going on with Ruby Soho. Coming in at 7, man, we have the Walmart exclusive Wardlow figure, man. You guys know that I love Wardlow. I, I put it on the channel a lot, man. I'm a big Wardlow guy. And this figure is great. I love the aesthetics of the figure. The attire is great. And I know, again, it is kind of a repaint of his other figures. But I love the gear, man. The, the little pattern that's on here. I like the War Dog on the back. He got the white blending in. Just a fun figure overall, you know. And I love Wardlow. So, you know what? Again, this is not the right list. It's just my list. And you guys know my criteria for the ranking and all those different things. Just because a figure is not on the list doesn't mean that it's the worst figure of all time. Just because a figure is number one doesn't mean that it's perfect and without any flaws. And this Wardlow for me, personally, is in at number seven. I just enjoy the Wardlow, man. I just love the guy. He's a beast. Look at him. Just, lo just looking like a, a damn beast in the countdown. Up next on our countdown is the Walmart exclusive again, but it is Chris Jericho, man. Back when we first saw this figure, back at... The first time we saw this figure, man, I was blown away by it. I love how unique it is. You have the purple going on. I love the jogger mold. Again, it does have shin cut. It's got the Nike Vapor Maxes on, which is great. And I love the new take on the head sculpt. Say what you will, it's not the most likeness of all time to Chris Jericho, but I like it. It's kind of a different take. He's got the necklace on there. Again, all the purple going on. It's a promo gear. You guys know I love promo gears and different looks of wrestlers outside of their wrestling gear is really high on list for me. So this is great. I love the tattoos, how you can see it barely on his wrist right there. They could have left that off on the forearm of the tattoos, but they kept it on there, man. You even have like the buttons on there. It's double jointed. It's just, I know all their figures are double jointed, but I feel like if another company would have made this figure, especially like Hasbro or something, it would have been a single jointed figure with the jacket. So this is great, man. I love this figure. I think it's fantastic. And yeah, it came in at number six, just a really underrated figure of the year. Cracking into our top five now, man, we have the Unmatched Series 7 Penta figure, and this is actually a really good time to shout out the Ray Phoenix from that wave, because I have the figure, I can't find it anywhere, man, and it definitely probably would have made my top 10, but I couldn't put him in my top 10 if I can't find the damn figure, so he would have either been in honorable mentions, or he would have been in the top 10, that figure is really great, with the silver jacket, what a great figure, but this Penta is unbelievable, all the red, the black, the silver going on, it's got like a glittery tone in the silver, which is really unique, he's tatted up, he's very toyetic, he should be in every single top 10 this year. He's just uh, he's just a toyetic monster. That's what Penta is. So, you know, any figure we get of him is going to be high on the list just because he's got so much going on. So he is a, he's a great figure, very fun figure to pose around and do all the different things with. Feels good in the hand, and it seems like they've improved him over time as well. So I'm all for a Penta figure, and he comes in at number five.
Coming in at number four, we have a ringside exclusive, and it is the Blood and Gut CM Punk from the Dog Collar Match 2-pack with MJF, man. This is one of those pieces that's going to be timeless. I think it's going to be one of those that's looked upon fondly. You have all the blood. You have all the guts, as they say. Great screaming head sculpt on here. I love the Dog Collar Match. I love the 2-pack. You know, say what you will about the shorts being like this cream color, but at the end of the day, it's still a fantastic piece. All the tattoos. CM Punk has some great AEW figures, and I can't wait for his Mattel ones, but we're covering the AEW ones today. And this one is just such a fun figure, man. Just a, one of those moments in time. I love how slim the kick pads are. It's just a great figure overall, man. I think you'll have a lot of fun posing this guy around. And so CM Punk does come in at the number four spot. But we do have three more remaining, man. Let's get into our top three AEW figures of the year. At number three, we have another ringside exclusive, and it is the ringside exclusive FTW Champion Hook figure, man. Tons of great accessories with this guy. I do like Hook. I like the build of this figure, and I love the gear. And it's just one of those fun figures, man, especially when you unbox it. You got all the accessories going on. Again, I don't know if the dog collar match Punk is in stock, but you can grab that. You can grab this. You can grab other figures out there from AEW that are amazing. You can go over there, use code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10%, but this figure is fun, man. It's just one of those fun figures that I find myself picking up and posing around and it's probably got a lot to do with the gear and I'm not huge on the boots as far as I feel like his feet are too small or something it's just a way that I don't, I don't know there's something about it there from the lower half that gets on my nerves sometimes but I have had a lot of fun with this figure and posing him around he's got all those accessories and stuff like that and just that gear is just phenomenal so the hook figure from Reeside is is one of my favorite figures of the year man coming in at the number three spot Coming in at number two, we have Mr. Brody Lee from Unmatched Series 6, man. I love a good suited body. I love a good figure in a suit, man. And for some reason, Jazzwares just knows how to pump these guys out, and they just feel immaculate in the hand, man. They feel great in the hand. They pose around well, and I love that out of a suited figure. It just looks very good aesthetically. It's slim build. It doesn't look like he's, I don't know, 800 pounds underneath there. He doesn't look like he's swole as hell. He just looks very, very handsome. Look at the guy right there spinning around. Great head sculpt. I know it's kind of a repeat head sculpt, but the red suit is just fire. It's great, man. And he's got the shin cut in there, which is just glorious. It's always beautiful to see. I, I just think that this is just a, such an aesthetically pleasing figure. And I need the Chase variant. I really do need the Chase. If you guys have that Brody Lee Chase in the navy suit with the gray pants, I need that one in my collection too, man. But this Brody Lee is just so fun. I think it's great. Any promo gear wrestling figure always does well for me, man. I don't know what it is. I just I even loved that as a kid, man. Growing up collecting Jax figures and different wrestling action figures, I always loved when they would give us guys or give us you know, popular guys in their promo backstage gears. I just think that's just so fun for me personally. So yeah, we have a Brody Lee in the suit coming in at number two. Rest in peace to the legend. And coming in at number one is the ringside exclusive, very nice, very evil, Dan Housen unrivaled figure, man. This figure is a figure I've been waiting on for so very long, man. Just so long we waited on a Dan Housen figure. And this one is my favorite. I know we had the unrivaled 13. We had the Amazon 2-pack with Hook, you know, the Hook Housen figure. We have this one. We have the Chase variant of the unrivaled 13, which are all great figures in their own right. But the ringside exclusive has the best gear. It's got the cloth cape. It is just the best. It's got the best packaging and all that mess as well, but not even taking that into consideration. Just looking at the figure overall, this is the Dan Housen figure for me. And I love the head sculpts. It's everything I could have asked for, of course. I would have liked some shin cut, and it looks like they tried to put shin cut in there, but they couldn't do it at the end of the day. There is like a slight little indentation in the calf. Maybe that was meant for me, but they didn't end up putting it in at the end of the day. But this Dan Housen figure is everything I've wanted. The tattoos look great. Head sculpts are great. You got the cursed hands in there, the cape, the boots. He feels good in hand, poses around well. Just the excitement level for this figure was undeniable. I've been waiting on this guy for a very long time and to finally get a Dan House and just checks all the boxes This is it for me right here, man This is an amazing figure and it's the best AEW figure of the year for me not counting the Supreme Edition figure So I had no problems putting Dan Housen at my number one spot But that pretty much wraps up my AEW figures of the year countdown, man I'd love to know down in the comment section below where you guys stand. Do you agree with my countdown? Where do you not agree with my countdown? I would love to know all those things down in the comment section below Do you also agree that Supreme Collection figures shouldn't be included in the top? Top 10. I just don't see. They have to have their own separate countdown. You can't throw those in there. They're not even close to the same thing. That Kenny Omega would easily be number one for me in, in terms of Supremes. But yeah, man, I had a lot of fun with this video. Of course, I always enjoy countdowns and whatnot. And I do apologize for the later upload, but hopefully you guys 
enjoy the video. Anyways, slowly chipping away at the office. The upload date for the office tour and whatnot is probably going to be January 4th, but it could be January 6th. We're going to play that by ear. We got some different stuff going on, trying to finalize everything, so that should be fun, man. But it will not be going up on New Year's Day as usual. It is going to have to wait a couple more days just to make sure that we finalize everything in there, but it's looking amazing. I'm very excited for it, but I appreciate all of your guys' support for everything. And a huge shout out to our Patreon members of the MDT YouTube channel who also support this channel, which I greatly appreciate. Thank you guys so very much for everything, man. You guys have been fantastic all year long, and I hope for 2024 to be even better, man. So a huge appreciation for every single one of you guys out there. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys. I will see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed one, and I'll see you later.